The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. We have the uh, Dow Industrials up 137, Nasdaq's up 83. You got the uh, S&P's up uh, 22. That is a percentage gain inside the Nasdaq of 1%. Uh, S&P's 8 tenths of 1% and the Dow Industrial's 5 tenths of 1%. Gold, gold contract on $5.80 trading at 15 25 30 an ounce. You have silver flat, $17.21. Uh, keep your eye, folks. This is going to be a nice Friday trading in Friday. Uh, gold and silver might take, these babies want higher price. This is uh, early in the day. They both have volume right now. Um, they had pulled back. They rejected lower price. They're staying at those highs. Oil, oil contract flat, also $54.60 a barrel. Notes and bonds, they just continue to be the number out here. We get the 10-year down four ticks, 130.26. 30-year off nine ticks at 165.14. If we get over and we take a look at this 10-year uh, first, what you're going to see is that you're just laying right at the highs once again. We got down to 130.20 out here, um, you know, about an uh, hour ago. Uh, we are at the 130.25. And you get volume in here once again. We already got 696,000 contracts. So that's, uh, that's laying up. We're going to do 1.5, somewhere in there. Yesterday we did uh, 2.7, and we made a new high. In fact, yeah, it was almost another ABC up. We we're going into a B point with 2.9. We did 2.7. Um, these babies, uh, they, 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 want, <laughs> they want higher price in a huge way. 30-year. Let's go take a look at the 30-year out here. 30-year. Let's see, USU. 30-year yesterday reached a price point of, let's get this. Okay, we hit uh, 166.30, monster volume too. 632,000 contracts, big numbers, huge numbers actually. Uh, the 30-year got under and stayed under the 2% uh, yesterday. Right now, you're just over the 2% mark. King dollar, yeah, remarkable thing here, no, no doubt, is that with, with the metals market holding up, king dollar is still at highs, and it looks like it's going after the high that was established out here on August 1st. Uh, that's 98,700, I believe. Let me see this. Yeah, it's 98,700. We're at 98,195. And anything that stays over 97,715 is saying, hey, guess what? You know, you can get up there, you can test it, and you can go higher. So you got... A lot of moving parts in, in this market out here. If we go back to the S&Ps for a second, uh, if you just heard that update I did, my take is that this, this is, you get the bounce going, you get option expiration, uh, they get the baby uh, popping at the open, uh, you can get these uh, trades closed, whether people are long shot, um, d hedging. Uh, what we have right now is that, you know, the high of, of the today is 28.78, and what I expect you're going to see here, you have, is that you're going to get a little downward pressure as we come through the market. It, the market doesn't necessarily have to go red, but I do expect the S&Ps are up 22 bucks right now. I expect by the time we're finished this uh, market out, um, you might be up two or three dollars. That's that's what I'm looking at. That uh, 28.56 is game. That's 14 points down from where we are. That'll still keep the S&Ps up about uh, seven. If we go over to the DAX in Germany. We take a look at the DAX in Germany. What you, what you have out here is that. There we go. So the DAX in Germany right now, uh, that, that's trading up 105 points. You're at 11,517. We go take a look at the FTSE in the UK. FTSE in the UK, 7,095. It was at uh, 71.25, and that, that also is having a hard time uh, holding price. Gold, we take a look at the gold contract here, and of course, Fridays inside the gold market. You can always expect high volatility. I don't think this is going to be any different out here today. What we have inside the gold market, we've hit a low of 15.15. You're trading 15.25 right now. You've done 200,000 contracts already. So you get a lot of churn that's happening in this marketplace. There's no doubt about that. If we take a look at this on a smaller basis, what you're going to see uh, is right at the 10 o'clock hour, you had a buyer come in. It was a nice pop. Uh, you did 5,300 contracts. 
you basically took out a small B point that had um, 1600 so it's like okay the next leg up there that's saying that we can get up to this 1532 which would uh, basically turn that into a negative six from a negative six to a positive one um, gonna be pretty wild let's go take a look at some of the uh, higher volume equities out here in a market that I expect is not gonna have volume Friday in the summer folks uh, that's just how it shakes out you gotta put oh here let me show you this this, this, here's some di real divergence. Okay, so let's go to the NDX 100 first. And this is what it is. You go to the NDX. What's running the NDX higher today is NVIDIA. NVIDIA is up 6%. AMD is up 3.5%. Okay, both chip companies, right? Check this out. AMAT is down 4.4%. Now, the reason that this is divergence in a huge way is that AMAT is blowing away a B point with volume. A, the A math and ABC structure on the way down. You're down $2.11. Your A point on this is 52.42. Your B point is 44. So approximately, well, let's go 45. Approximately seven points. Your C point is 48. So we're talking about a 41. And a 41 gets you down into the swing lows of May. Now, the reason I'm saying this is divergence is that A math is a much better leading indicator as to where these chip stocks are going. The reason being is that when chip orders come in, the bottom line is that the AMAT is putting the machines in these places, and most times what happens is that AMAT needs a huge backlog because these, these chip companies, you, do, you, do not, you do not build these things overnight. It's a year, year and a half out, and so the divergence is that the, the leader, my take is the leader would be AMAT, is down, and then you get NVIDIA, NVIDIA came out with decent numbers. That is traded as high as 161 today. You're at 157. This is just all this is a dead cat bounce. It got into the gap. It can't hold the gap. The gap is 159.28. And if we pull this and we take a look at this, what you're going to see is I expect this also is going to basically morph its way uh, into lower prices as we go throughout the trading day. If we take a look at AMD, AMD is the same setup. It's up $1.12. AMD is right into its downdraft that was created when it came out with its numbers. That's when AMD went from $32 um, on Monday uh, down into this $30.54. It's the same type of setup. So um, let me pull up. There we go. Yeah, same type of setup. It, it's, you know, we'll come down with monster volume. come down $127 million. You're going up with uh, 19 now, Of course, the day just started. We're going to get a lot more than $19 million. Um, but the, the bigger issue is... Uh, AMAT doing an ABC structure on the way down. It's already blown away its B point, and you're talking about blowing away a B point, and it's, we're not even 45 minutes into uh, trading, you know, so big numbers. Some of the other higher volume equities uh, in this marketplace out here this morning, you get Cisco's up 60 cents, Apple's up $3, you got Micron Tech up $1.20, uh, Uber's up $1.30. We have, uh, let's see, uh, General Electric's up 55 cents. GE, we're going to see the classic battle between GE, uh, you know, the CEO coming out, uh, of course, denying everything. Um, this is going to be a long road down. It has been a long road down for GE, but it's going to be a much longer road down. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Ah, Dow Industrials. Dow Industrials right now trading up 161. NASDAQ up 82. S&P's up 24. Come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow up 133. NASDAQ up 78. S&P's up 22. Let's go inside the Dow Industrials and see what's putting some uh, positive points uh, inside that uh, industry out here. So you have uh, Apple putting 20 positive points, Goldman 11, 3M 10, IBM 10, JP Morgan 10. Taken away from it. Very few. You got uh, Chevron putting eight negative points, Boeing 5, uh, McDonald's 4. We get over and we take a look at the uh, oil market, folks. What you happen with oil, oil looks like it's setting up a nice big ABC structure on the way down. Uh, what we did with oil out here today, we got to a price point of $55.67. Now you're, you're basically off that a buck twenty. I mean, oil's been moving around in a couple dollar moves uh, just about each and every day. But when you actually take a look at this chart, what it's actually done is that you continue to have higher lows, lower highs, and lower lows. Uh, we came down, we came down last week, we blew away the swing point when we hit $50.52 on the 7th, blowing away the swing point from June of uh, $50.91. Uh, $50 that correlates uh, right back into the XLE also. Uh, the XLE now is one of the first ones, and we'll get this on the weekly basis too. The XLE is one of the first ones to really, well, it blew away the June swing point. Okay, the June swing point on the XLE was $58.77. We're at $56.60. Had volume on the blow away. Now you, you, you're deep into the bar, the bar of the low of December. And that's where I'm figuring that this market's going, period. Uh, the, the high of that low is $58. The low is $53.36. We're at $56.59. Uh, uh, so that's coming into that bar. We got $88 million. You're at uh, 55 today. Let's just see how this works out. So 55, 65. Yeah, yeah well, you, you, you're going to be in, you're into that right now with volume, but not heavier volume. You know, it's basically lighter by about uh, 10 million shares on the weekly basis. But we haven't hit that bottom yet. I expect what you're going to see, you're going to build more cars to try to get into that lower level. We're going to take a look at the uh, XLF. Because these are the two sectors that have been making their ways down into these areas. Uh, the XLF, uh, that June swing low was $25.92, and we're at $26.32. Uh, we put this on a weekly. I believe what we're going to see is that we actually broke it with volume. So let's see. So the June swing low is 225 
Yeah, we're 233. Okay, so what you have is this. And in, in the XLF, now this is really cool to, to see how this shakes out, folks. The XLF never got to its highs, number one. That being said, though, what it's done the last three weeks is that you've come down, but you are coming down with volume, okay? Uh, the, the bottom line is that what has happened out here is that you came down uh, on the, the first leg. Uh, the first leg you came down from a price point of 28 uh, down to 27. You did uh, 305 million. The second leg you did 341 million. And as I'm saying that, you know, we'll find out what this news is. <laughs> uh, as I'm saying that, the, the S&P just popped from uh, 25 to 32. And let's see how this baby is shaking out. Let's see what they're going to say. Well, it's not necessarily, I don't, I don't, whatever, whatever it is, uh, I, I don't see what is out here just yet. Uh, if we take a look at this S&P, ESU9, you're going to see we just popped up to, let's see, this got to 28.84, and you're back to 28.75. Um, anything, you, close, you stay under this 28.78 uh, bottom line, you can expect these things all day long. Uh, and what's going to be really wild here watching is this is that the aspect, when, when, you, when you pop like this and you can't hold price, that is a monster number, folks, okay? Because let's see if I pull this back. So you run a 10-minute bar where, it, well, it, we're only two minutes into this bar, so we'll see whether it can hold it or not. You know, it should, it should have been able to hold it. It hasn't hold, held it. You know, we get, we get that nice pop up to 84, and then uh, it backed right down uh, six points ASAP. We go into the NQs, NQZ, no, NQU, nine. Okay, we take a look at the NQs. NQs, yeah, same deal. So this is gonna be, this is, this is gonna say quite a bit. You know, the, the NQs just popped up to 7606, and the NQs gotta stay above uh, 7600. And it's having a hard time doing it. That's saying, what this is saying, this is what's pretty wild here, is that, so picture, you get a pop over your consolidation. As you pop over the consolidation, who's ever going into that, what they're looking for, they're looking for more buys at that to accelerate the baby up. Well, guess what? <laughs> that isn't what happened on the first get-go. What you had in the first get-go is that there's a sell order there because you pop up so dramatically and then they sold it off. So we'll see where this shakes out. But you can expect uh, this volatility out here to continue. There's no doubt about that. Um, let's go take a look at this dollar and see where the dollar moved around to. Okay, so the dollar came lower. This is going to be interesting, man. This is going to be a nice volatile day out here. There's no doubt. So what we just had, what we just had is that you just had the dollar go from a price point of 98.205 down to 98.09, and that has juice behind it. So this very well, this would be really interesting, man, if this can't hold, and I should be able to hold the 97.715 today. But guess what? The, uh, it's, where it, it, well, it's all of uh, 10.20 in the morning. Uh, you know, so the bottom line is that uh, this volatility will continue. And what you do have is that we, you get option expiration, uh, which brings high volatility at the open as well as the close. And you know, the way that we're trading out here, you can expect this high volatility to stay uh, all day. Let's go take a look at uh, the small caps, the IWM. Now, the small caps have been the weakest indice. Uh, small caps right now are up $1.98. You're trading $147.43. And um, this baby, yeah, look at this, man. So this is already, the June low on this was uh, 145.33. We hit 144. You're going to do that with 288 million versus 380. But yet you do, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to have, have lighter volume on, on the test on a weekly basis. Uh, but it doesn't, it's not getting any traction. That's, that's the real bottom line. It's not getting any traction out here, meaning the IWM is not getting any traction out here. If we go take a look at that and you put that on a weekly basis, what you're going to see 
the next leg down in the IWM, you know, you crack this uh, 145.32 and then it's sticking out like a sword down is that December low. The, the amazing part about the IWM is that the highs that were generated inside the IWM go all the way back one full year. So it's, it's a big number. Dow, Dow Industrials, let's go take a look at the Dow. The Dow is up at 232 right now. And inside the Dow, we had just checked it, but it's still, Apple's still putting 25 positive points. You got uh, Goldman 18, 3M 14. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 207. NASDAQ's up 94. S&P's are up 29. And that little pop there, it looks like that little pop there is that uh, when that S&P popped up there, you get uh, uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, as well as Finance Minister of uh, Germany, uh, as they're up uh, speaking, saying that, uh, let's see, they're ready to run a budget deficit if Europe's largest economy goes into a recession. 
Uh, shortfall in the tax revenue from economic slump could be offset by new, new debt, weekly re, uh, citing uh, sources inside the chancellery. The bottom line, will uh, not sure if that's what popped it, but it looks like that that's what popped it, because that simultaneously uh, came out uh, when we saw those uh, S&Ps uh, do that pop of about, it looks like, let's see what we got here. We got that, that one initial pop goes from uh, 69, 79, yeah, 50, it was a 15 point pop in the S&P. Uh, and you had the volume in it. And, you know, the, the real key is going to be here, you know, can it, can it basically stay over this uh, 2878? You know, you're laying right at the 2878. This, this will be a battle out here for a while, this 2878 area, because it did get up there, stayed up there. Uh, let me see, it closed out. Oh, look at this, though. So check this out. On the, so what happens is this. We got over the bar. We did have volume. We did, there's 101,000 contracts at that level, right? Then you didn't close over the price, though. So next 10-minute bar is going to tell us where this is going to be shake out. Because if it doesn't close over it again, uh, your probability gets much higher that now you're going to run, run right down the other side. So this is going to be uh, quite an option expiration day. There's no two ways about that. If we take a look at the uh, volume right now, just in the S&P, the SPY, if we take a look at the SPY, what you're going to see is that the SPY right now, 16 million shares, that's nothing. Uh, you're at 287. And what that did had the same type of pop. Now, the gap in the SPY, folks, is 288.69. We've hit 288.27. So we haven't got up to that level yet. And the, the, it, it, when you look at the SPY, the number to keep your eye on the SPY, and we're 30 cents over it right now, is 287.36. That's the number. Once you... If you get over that and stay over for a while, then it would make a run up for that gap. You don't stay up there, then it's going to make the run on the other side on the way down. So, uh, NDX 100, we take a look at the three Qs. The three Qs out here. Okay, so they got up to the, they got up to 185.30. And the number to keep, well, see, the gap is higher. The gap is 185, 189.89. And then the number the Q is going to stay over is 184.71. And they're, they're both hanging right at those levels right now. So the, uh, it's perfect. It's 10.30 in the morning. Uh, this battle will lay out here right until I probably get off the air. Notes and bonds. So check this out. So you had the, when, when that move came in the S&Ps, notes back down. That being said, guess what? They just, you know, they didn't even get to the swing of yesterday. They, the 10-year note back down to 130.18. And it, it, the 10-year itself would have to get below the 130.10. And thus far, it doesn't look like that is going to fly. The 30-year, we put the 30-year up. We do the same exercise inside the 30-year. And what you're going to see with the 30-year that got down to 164.27. That that has to get below 164.17. Still fast move down, but guess what? You, actually, this is pretty amazing. Actually, 164.27. This is pretty amazing, actually. So the 30-year folks, okay? You know, we were trading down at 164.37, 27 rather, at uh, 540 this morning. All it did is come down and hit that number. You know, could test it again, but uh, that is not a lot of selling inside the marketplace uh, when you get the S&P popping 15 points. Just this isn't there. We go take a look at uh, Walmart. Walmart yesterday, uh, bottom line, comes out with numbers, had some heavy growth numbers. Uh, Walmart popped yesterday. It had big volume, 19.8 million. And uh, today, uh, you know, bottom line is, is going after its high. What's going to be intriguing here is that it hasn't hit its high yet. I expect we're going to see it, though. The high out there is 115.49. It doesn't have to hit it today, but what you are doing is that you are accelerating into that high point, and you do have volume behind the move. So, um, you know, Walmart's going to be uh, Walmart's a competitor beyond belief. There's no doubt about that. But uh, that looks to me like, like it's going to be the next setup inside the uh, online business that uh, give them a couple more years, they're going to be competing with uh, Amazon in a big way. Uh, Amazon's going to be competing with them. 
The XAU, the HUI, gold contract, the XAU, HUI, they're still rejecting to lower price. Uh, XAU right now, uh, 80, $92, 84 cents. And what you're going to see out here at the end of today, uh, we were pushing with volume last week, and you're pushing with volume this week. No, at highs. The Gold Bugs Index. We take a look at the Gold Bugs Index. Gold Bugs Index set up the same way. We're 214.73. You put this on a weekly and yeah, same deal. You're pushing with the, you're at you're at highs and you're pushing with highs. The cool thing about the uh, the way that both of these are set up is that when we had gone higher. You know, the bottom line, you had the volume behind it, then it gave it up on price. Well, guess what? It came all the way right back, stayed up there, and that's saying that, guess what? It not only held price, it's saying it wants higher price. We go take a look at a couple of the gold companies over in South Africa. We take a look at Harmony. If you're watching Target TV, this is Harmony in Rand dollars. So you're at 44.69, and if we put this on a weekly, let me put this... What you're going to see is that this baby is making its way up to the July 16th, uh, I mean, yeah, August of 2016 uh, area also. That, that area inside, Harmony is 67,000 Rand. I'll bring this back to the U.S. so you can see the correlation inside the U.S. Uh, you know, the last three months, this basically doubled in price, as did many of these uh, gold equities. And if we put this on a monthly, you're going to see that... Well, this is a nice expansion with volume, man. So, 2016, that's where most of these golds are going. 2016, $4.87 for Harmony. You're at 296 right now. The expansion of volume is dramatic. You know, last month we did 174 million. This month, which is not even over, we're already at 174 million. You're going into 94 million. So, your probability gets much higher that you're going to get it. Uh, the low of the highs is 352, you're at 296. You know, and what's going to be cool here is this. If Harmony can launch that 487, you are talking some major price expansion after that. The reason being is that, as did many of the other goals, when we went down from 2013, you, 2000, yeah, 2011 rather, that was a very fast move on the way down. So once you launched this 413, you know, you can get up to, you can get up to, basically, you can get up to eight bucks pretty quick. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 249. Nasdaq's up 106. S&Ps are up 33. Let's get over and take a look at a few of these cannabis stocks. So you had uh, Canopy Growth. Uh, this is trading at $28.12. Now, this baby took a nice little hit yesterday. Uh, you gap down, and uh, this is going to be really interesting, too, because this is an ABC structure down. So let's see here. So 38 30 so 8 bucks, which gets you 26 Oh, there you go. So you're, you're, you're already hit 27, but it, I'll show you on this thing. I've been waiting for this for a while because what you have is that this has been a, an alleged consolidation. Let me do look at this first on a weekly. So on a weekly, you're coming into the breakout area 28. That was a sign of strength. The bottom of that breakout area is 24.46. And if we pull this and we put that on a monthly, I expect that's right where we're going to go. Um, this has lower to go, but these, these things are backing down. There's no doubt about it. Um, if we take a look at a few others, let's see, Aurora, ACB. Okay, so that's trading $6 flat. Pull this back. They're, they're all they're all kind of trading the same way, meaning that they're coming back into the bottom of this consolidation. So Aurora still is. That that's, looks to me like it's still got a couple bucks to go. These things are getting close. You know, the the, the, the size of the consolidation in these is pretty amazing, actually. Um, you know, it just goes to show that uh, when these numbers come out, it's gonna it's gonna basically make a difference. So let's see. Okay, so let's see what they have to say. Okay, Cannabis Growth Chief Executive Officer, the pot company can overcome unexpectedly weak quarter that sent shares tumbling and thinks that the firm will hit its target of a Canadian $1 billion, uh, or $750 million U.S. revenue by March. Let's see what they say. Yeah, they already, what Cannabis had done, they, they already canned their last CEO, Bruce Linton. He was one of the guys that actually was the, one of the founders. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so Canopy harvested 40,960 kilograms in the quarter that ended in June 30th. This is the largest quarterly harvest to date of any Canadian pot producer. Um, Let's see if I can find another one. I'm not sure the where the shot fall was in this. Let's see. Okay, so 
They missed revenue. They the produced a missed revenue that missed the lowest analyst estimates that appeared to lose first place share to can, can, Canadian in the Canadian market to a competitor, Aurora Cannabis. Canopy posted a decline in recreational cannabis revenue and took an $8 million write down to account for potential reimbursements to its wholesale customers for unsold product. Interesting. Unsold product. I wonder how this works. Analysts agreed that it was a broadly disappointing quarter, but said one bright spot in the canopy's large harvest and growing inventory, which could position it well in the competing as a new derivative product, such as ed edibles are legalized in Canada uh, later in the year. Results were well, well under our expectations. Yeah, we know that. Uh, gross recreational cannabis revenues fell 11.4% from the prior quarter due to a very surprising shift in sales of oils and soft gels, which tumbled to Canadian... Look at this. This is crazy. Okay, hold it. Gross re recreational cannabis revenues fell 11.4% from the prior quarter due to a, surprising, a very surprising shift in sales of oils and soft gels, which tumbled to, listen to this, it tumbled to 200,000 Canadian from 36.5 million Canadian. I don't even get that. Those are oils and soft gels. Okay, one positive note uh, is Canopy's uh, 394 million of inventory on hand, including 93 million of finished products, which we believe likely, um, yeah, well, you know what, that, that's, it doesn't make much sense that you have a huge inventory um, people got to buy the inventory, right? That's the real bottom line. The amount of cannabis harvested, which grew 183% from the last quarter, uh, was the most positive aspect of the results. Um, uh, however, Canopy posted no organic international sales growth or domestic and domestic sales declined. Despite a substantial uptick, uh, we estimate plus 55% in the broader Canadian recreational cannabis market during the quarter. Um, in addition, Canopy had a $1.2 billion non-cash loss uh, on the extinguishment of warrants held by Constellation Brands, which was surely jarring to some investors. That's a, that's a trip. There's no doubt about that. In addition, we believe marijuana margins and cash flows could further deteriorate as Canopy spends to manufacture more costly derivative products like the beverages. Yeah, bottom line is that uh, they have some more problems out here. Let's go back to the S&P as I'm talking here. The S&P... Uh, is up 38 points, and I think it's, yeah, it's over that first pop, too. So you're at the, pull this back here. So the second pop here, let's see, you got, okay, so this is going to, this is going to be the test of the, of the, of the high. So the first pop up here, you got to, uh, 2884, and you had volume of 101,000 contracts. You have two minutes. We're not going to have the volume, so the real question is going to be, does it, close over that number in 11 o'clock. Uh, no, I mean uh, 10.50. That's going to be the number, because this is the test. Uh, it's, it's definitely lighter volume. Let's go over to the Qs, I mean the NQs, NQU9, and look at the same setup. It's the exact same setup, and the number on the Qs right now, 76.06, and you're at 76.08, it's not going to have the volume, that's for sure. We'll, we'll see uh, if it closes over that number. If it closes over that number, guess what? You can go higher. Closes under that number, probability is that you're going to go back right down. Uh, because most of the, uh, the, I would say the volatility here, you, you get, we get, well, you, we have all day, but what you definitely do have here is that you have the aspect of uh, another half hour of really good volatility. If we go take a look at the bond market, you'll see as the prices are going higher, bond market's going lower. What we just did here is now, now you're testing out, and this is going to be the test here. We're testing out the lows that were generated out here yesterday morning at 840 in the 10 year. That number is 130.14. Right, that's right where we are. And it's not going to have the juice to, to blow this away right now because that was a big number at 840. We did 124,000 contracts at that number. And we take a look at this right here. And right now you're only at 42,000 contracts. Um, so... A lot of moving parts out here. There's no, no two ways about that. We go back over to the gold contract. We take a look at gold. And on Fridays, man, this is just such a trip because... <laughs> the, so gold right now, you're down 13 bucks. Yeah, that's not going to break the lows of this morning either. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow. Dow Industrial is up 287. NASDAQ. 
up 115. S&P's up 38. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now up at 281. We have the NASDAQ up 117. S&Ps are up 37. That gives you a gain of 1.5% in the NASDAQ, 1.1% in the S&Ps, and 1.1% in the Dow Industrials. Uh, we go and we, we take a look at the uh, good old King Dollar, and uh, it looks like uh, King Dollar, bottom line, we'll see whether, uh, how this shakes out uh, as we come out through the trading day. Uh, but King Dollar is trying to make it back inside uh, this uh, 97 to 715 once again. Uh, right now, you're at 98.03, so it won't take much to get back inside there. And uh, that number, that is the high that was generated out here on the 23rd of May. 23rd of May, that's the number you want to keep an eye on, because if it can't make it again, guess what? That is saying that the battle continues. Now, the dollar, folks, has been at these levels, okay, since October of last year. That's the, the consolidation the dollar is in. It's, the, it's just, it's, it's been going sideways. Each time you go higher, there's no buyers. Each time you go lower, there's no sellers. This will straighten itself out, but bottom line, hasn't yet. We're going to take a look at the euro. When the news come out that Germany would go into a deficit, uh, bottom line is that that took the S&P higher and uh, took the euro lower. Uh, euro right now got down to a 110 
then rejected lower price. So this is going to be pretty wild watching how this thing shakes out. And this is what you have. The, well, we, the last low that was generated in the euro was on August 1st. The high of that low is 110.96. And guess what? It's going to be a classic. We get to 110.66. It rejected it. And uh, now you're at 111.02. So, you know, I don't, to me, that wasn't really new news that big deal. You're going to go into deficit. All these central banks and, and countries folks are going into deficits up, <laughs> up to their eyebrows, right? Stay right there, folks. We've got Fast Market coming up next. And, of course, we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Option expiration. Hold on for the ride, folks. Have a great one. Have a safe one.